Welcome to our Good Friday service here at Fletcher United Methodist Church. I'm Randy Sherrill, the teaching pastor. I want to remind you of our Easter Sunday schedule. We will gather for the sunrise service at Patty's Chapel Cemetery on Patty's Chapel Road at 7 a.m. We will then have our 8.30 service here in the sanctuary. The Easter egg hunt will begin at 10 a.m. on the front portico. So children, bring a basket and everything else will be provided. And then our 11 o'clock service will follow that. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we, who glory in this death for our salvation, may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. They went out and followed him those who had sat with him at the table. He led them to a garden where he prayed while they slept. Prayed while they slept. Prayed.
while they slept. He was kissed, and because he was kissed, he was arrested. And when he was arrested, his friends fled, some to go into hiding, one to stand beside a bonfire and say, I never knew him. I never knew him. I never knew him until a cock crowed. He was brought before the religious authorities and accused of the sin of blasphemy and of threatening insurrection. Having no power to deal with him, they handed him over to the state governor, who listened to the accusations and then asked the accused, What have you to say? What have you to say? What have you to say? To which the response was silence. He had said it all. He was not found to be guilty of any criminal charges, but because he was an embarrassment, it was decided that his own people should determine his fate. This they did by shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! He was cursed and spat on, whipped and humiliated. And on his shoulders a gift was placed, which he accepted with grace. Under the weight of this gift, he stumbled and fell, stumbled and fell, stumbled and fell all the road to Calvary. On top of a rubbish dump, he was nailed to a cross of wood and left to die. While soldiers gambled, critics joked, religious leaders smiled with satisfaction, and his mother watched and waited, watched and waited, watched and waited, until in the end, she saw a sign of the beginning. Thank you. 
Hear the Word of God from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that He opened for us through the curtain, that is, through His flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's Psalter is from Psalm chapter 22, verses 1 through 18 and 25 through 31. We'll be using the response that we see in our United Methodist Hymnal, which you can find in the downloadable bulletin, uh, the same place you found the link to the video today. We'll be using response one, specifically earmarked for Good Friday. I invite you to join us for the sung response portions and also for the text that you see printed in bold. We invite you to speak those portions with us. Blaine, can we hear our response for today? Let's sing that together. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and And by by night, night, but find no rest. Yet you, the praise of Israel, are enthroned in holiness. In you you our forebears forebears trusted. trusted. They They trusted, trusted, and and you you delivered them. them. To you they cried, and were saved. In In you you they trusted, trusted, and and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not human, scorned Scorned by by others and and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They They make make mouths at me. They They wag their heads. He committed his cause to the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let the Lord rescue him, for the Lord delights in him. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe upon my mother's breast. Upon you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do Do not be far from me, for trouble trouble is near, and there there is none to help. encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They They open open wide their their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It It is is melted within within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, 
and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. You You lay lay me in in the the dust dust of death. Indeed, dogs surround me. A A company company of of evildoers encircles me. They They have pierced pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They They stare stare and gloat gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And And for for my my raiment, raiment, they they cast cast lots. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My My vows I will pay pay before before those who worship the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those Those who seek the Lord Lord shall praise praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And And all the families of the nations shall shall worship worship before before the Lord. Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. All who sleep in the earth shall bow down to the Lord. All who go down to the dust shall bow before the Lord, and I shall live for God. Posterity shall serve the Lord. Each generation shall tell of the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Surely the Lord has done it. Kathy and I served as co-pastors for three years in Charlotte. In one of our two churches, there was a family with a son and a younger preschool daughter. The daughter's name was Amanda. My prominent memory of her during those three years was her insistent question, why? She wasn't defiant or wanting to act out, but she honestly wanted to know the reasons behind actions and sought to discover how things worked. I was moved by the bishop to fill a vacant appointment. And six years later, Kathy and I moved to two separate churches in Winston-Salem. Ironically, Amanda and her family had moved to Winston-Salem and were active in my new church. She was now an older elementary student. Her musical talents had begun to blossom, and she graduated from college with a degree in instrumental music education and taught in middle school for a few years. But her inquisitive spirit was still very active, and she ended up choosing to join the United States Coast Guard, was then accepted into Officer Candidate School and then Flight School, And she is now a senior rescue helicopter pilot stationed on the U.S. Pacific Coast. And I've watched a few videos of her rescue operations, and she is outstanding. I can't imagine keeping control of that large helicopter in these blowing winds like crazy in the sea rescues. But the why questions led her to the ultimate call in her life. And I'm so very proud of her. Why questions arise in our lives, mostly as a response to difficult, confusing, or seemingly impossible situations. Our holy scriptures are filled with that type of wrestling. And the book of Job is centered in several why questions. But today I want to turn the question around 180 degrees. The author of Hebrews delves into the joyful why questions. Why does God love us so extravagantly? Why are we worth God going to all of this trouble and suffering to redeem us? Throughout my ministry, Several non-Christians who know a bit about our practices in the church have asked, Why do you Christians call the day your Jesus was executed Good Friday? 
That seems so strange. The text for today begins with a reminder of the covenant made through the prophet Jeremiah, the new covenant that is now written on our hearts. So what is good that's expressed in this short piece of the theology of the writer of Hebrews. In Christ, sins are forgiven, and there is no further need for us to make liturgical sacrifices. We gain confidence to come before God, who is now approachable because of that overflowing love and redemption. We have a constant intercessor in Christ, which is emphasized that now All things are holy, and we don't need a unique and special building or place to encounter God. Christ is the great high priest who always seeks our best, even when we turn and run the other way. In the offering of Christ, we experience the new birth that not only forgives the past, but begins that wonderful holy work of rebuilding and renewing our evil conscience that heretofore has been much too self-centered. We can grow in faithfulness because God is completely faithful. And in Christ we learn how to provoke one another to love and good needs, good deeds, which is totally opposite from the way our old self thinks about provoke. And finally, in Christ, there is full encouragement, even when the world around and in us seems to be crumbling, because Christ holds the future. And that day, that final day of this existence, is finally a day of full presence and healing and glory. That's what makes today Good Friday a very good day. Let us be silent. It was on the Friday. It was on the Friday that they ended it all. Of course, they didn't do it one by one. They weren't brave enough. All the stones at the one time, or no stones thrown at all. They did it in crowds. In crowds where you can feel safe and lose yourself and shout things you would never shout on your own and do things you would never do if you felt the camera was watching you. It was a crowd in the church that did it and a crowd in the civil service that did it and a crowd in the street that did it, and a crowd on the hill that did it. And he said nothing. He took the insults, the bruises, the spit on the face, the thongs on the back, the curses in the ears. He took the sight of his friends turning away, running away and he said nothing he let them do their worst until their worst was done as on Friday they ended it all and would have finished themselves had he not cried father forgive them and began the revolution.